Uh, this is Mohammed Hassan for Middle East Thai, and I am joined here by the Green Party presidential candidate, Dr. Jill Stein. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to have you here. Thanks for coming to cover this. This is a big night for you after months of campaigning, of being on the road, of talking to people, building coalitions. What does success look like for you tonight? Success uh, is, I feel like it, it is ours. Victory is ours. And what that means is that we emerge from this uh, race where there was every effort made to silence us, to suppress us, to throw us off the ballot, to uh, demonize us and, and smear our campaign. We emerge stronger than I ever could have possibly imagined. And we emerge with a real working coalition that is very dedicated to um, continuing this fight. It feels like this is a launch party. It doesn't feel like this is the end of a campaign. It feels very much uh, like we are going to continue together. And this campaign has brought together the Muslim American community, the Green Party, uh, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, uh, the students. Uh, there are so many people who have unified in this uh, incredible crucible right now of this era of genocide that it has brought out really some of the most amazing, strong and dedicated uh, spirits of humanity. And we have found each other and uh, we're not going away. We're not going anywhere. I think the efforts to smear us and to silence us have failed miserably. They tried to keep us off the ballot. We're on the ballot for about 95% of voters. Um, you know, they have created a so-called war room to uh, disparage us and smear us. And that War Room has the budget of our entire campaign. They have a staff of 30 people. Yet, what they've come up with is actually a laughing stock. Um, you know, it's a, a, a set of preposterous smears for which they have been really dragged on social media. So, you know, some of the Green parties, the neoliberal Green parties, have asked me to step down, you know, and, and to stop, um, you know, challenging the war machine. And, you know, it is... Um, what can I say? It's, it's an ironic uh, badge of honor that we are standing up uh, against these internal divisions within the Green Party, uh, really drawing the line between the warmongers and those who are actually standing up for an agenda of peace, which is what the Green Party is supposed to be about. So, Well, tell me about this coalition that you mentioned. Now, obviously, we are here in Dearborn, Michigan, the so-called Arab American capital. Uh, tell me why you picked this spot to have your your, your, well, actually, to, to celebrate this night. Um, well, there, this is ground zero. <laughs> this is ground zero for the new politics, a politics that is of by and for the people, that's not bought and paid for by Wall Street and the war machine and APAC. This is that alternative. And the, you know, the, the Muslim American community has really led the way in this uh, opposition to genocide, in this effort to stand up against the war machine, and not only say that genocide is unacceptable, but also to say that our tax dollars should be spent here on the American people. And so the Muslim American community has the moral strength and the, the, the conviction and the backbone to actually stand up. And the courage of this community has been absolutely inspirational. And we have basically partnered with this community from the very start. There were uh, Muslim Americans who adopted our campaign very early on and um, who've been a guide for us to uh, reaching out to the broader Muslim community. So um, I am so uh, grateful for the leadership of this community and its courage in standing up not only to oppose genocide, but to stand up here for our democracy and to stand up uh, for the right of this community to be heard and to have political power. Because, um, you know, uh, it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, for new Americans who are coming here and they're just like learning the system, uh, that's a lot, a lot to learn. I myself grew up during the Vietnam War, and resistance to the prevailing politics was just, it was the order of the day. So we learned how to do that, you know, in our, in our younger years. But for people who came here as immigrants who were seeking acceptance, you know, within larger society, 
uh, and who are being smeared and demonized uh, because the U.S. is at war with Muslim countries around the world. This is a very uh, difficult role uh, to take on. And that community has really stepped up to the plate and asserted incredible moral leadership. And, you know, I have to say the Muslim community is so well organized, um, maybe because of participation, you know, religious participation. The community is just very organized. Um, you know, maybe it's comparable to the black church in some ways, but uh, with, you know, with a little bit of, of difference, which would be interesting to think about historically. But, you know, in the same way that the black community can be very well organized, I, I have to say the Muslim community is extremely well organized and well, educated uh, and, yeah, and very powerful. So you are co-hosting this watch party with about the abandoned Harris campaign, which has really tried to galvanize a protest vote against the Democrats over their position on mm -hmm. the war in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And you, you've mentioned some of the, your criticism you've received, and some people have criticized you for taking advantage of that protest vote. And so you mentioned coalitions, and, and I want you to tell me a little bit more about where this partnership with between yourself, between the Green Party and the Muslim community and the Palestinian and American communities, where does it go from here? Um, so let me just uh, back up for a second, you know, taking advantage of, you know, the misery of the Muslim community by helping to lift up their, the voice of the Muslim American community. I mean, I think this is self-serving propaganda that is trying to uh, destroy the empowerment and the voice of the Muslim community by saying you're being taken advantage of by a campaign that actually listens to the Muslim community that that has incorporated a Muslim American as my running mate. Um, you know, I think this is uh, it's nonsense to say that we're taking advantage of. These are the policies that we have stood for in the Green Party here since 2006 when we adopted a position in favor of uh, boycott, divestment, and sanctions and against Israeli apartheid and occupation. So this is where we've been. Actually, our policies haven't changed at all in three the three races that I've uh, run at the presidential level since 2012. What changed is, is history, and so we sort of got discovered. Now, is that taking advantage of people? I don't think so, not at all. That's, that's like kind of ludicrous. Uh, I think this is a partnership. And so you you uh, mentioned, like, so what, what comes to the table here with this partnership? I think it's a shared moral vision. It is a common set of values uh, that not only, um, uh, you know, condemns militarism and, uh, and abuse and violence, but also which uh, supports basic human rights and social justice. And, uh, you know, respect for the climate and the planet. I think there is so much uh, overlap in our basic values here. So that's one thing we bring together. I think we bring together, you know, as Greens, we have a lot of experience challenging power in uh, elections. And, you know, the Muslim community has an awful lot of experience um, in the world of uh, business, in uh, building organizations, enduring strong organizations, and community organizing. And I think these uh, skills are very magical and powerful when brought together. And I have to say, the uh, experience we've had over the course of the last year working with uh, Abandoned Biden, uh, working with the other organizations that are nonprofits, so they don't endorse, but still they engage and they uh, educate their, their communities. So like uh, ADC, the um, Arab American uh, Anti-Discrimination uh, Coalition. They, you know, we've had such great experience on the ground, strengthening our democracy, um, educating voters, empowering voters, and uh, working against genocide. So there's just so much overlap and a critical skill set that comes together it makes me really excited about what we're going to do going forward. Finally, Dr. Stein, there is a big chance that Donald Trump wins the White House tonight. And obviously, we're still waiting to see the results. But if that does happen, and if he does win Michigan in particular, a lot of people, especially on the Democratic side, are going to point their fingers at you. 
And I want to ask you, there has been a lot of talk about democracy being at stake in this election. And you have spoken about a lot of issues that are close to the hearts and minds of a lot of people in this community. So I want to ask you what you feel is really at stake in this election. Um, I think everything is at stake. I think um, human rights, international law, uh, World War III, which we could be dragged into by Bibi Netanyahu, who is looking to suck us into um, war, uh, expanding war in the Middle East, which could easily go global and go nuclear. You know, in my view, it is our political system right now. It is Democrats as well as Republicans who are dragging us uh, into uh, a, an impossible future. And unfortunately, the Democrats are not the solution to Donald Trump. If they were, they would win this election. But, you know, they come up with candidates like Kamala Harris, who've been completely protected, who didn't participate in a single debate or have, you know, until very late on, and who did not, uh, who was not open to interviews uh, throughout her, you know, uh, throughout the race and then for much of the time even after her nomination. She's done, you know, interviews you could count on one hand. So this is not a capable candidate. This is not a vetted candidate. This is not a candidate who stands for something. This is just a symbol of power in the Democratic Party. So they've brought this upon themselves. I think they have no one else to blame. And if voters, well, put it this way, voters left Kamala Harris because of her conducting a genocide, she could have won those voters back in the blink of an eye. Um, and, uh, you know, if she was willing to call for a weapons embargo right now uh, to stop the genocide, she would have won those votes back. So regardless of what the vote count is, regardless of whether our numbers uh, are equal to the margin of difference, um, in any case, Kamala Harris has no one to blame but herself if she loses this election. Uh, she could have stood up and done the right thing at any time. She did not want to do that. Um, if she wanted to do that, you know, she could have called for the embargo one votes back and have won this race. That was, that's been clear for a very long time. So I think that Muslim Americans should not be blamed, who will also be blamed here. Uh, should we go back? Should we rerun, you know, should we uh, rerun the tape? and support this genocidal candidate? I don't think anyone in their right mind would want to do that. The Democrats are going to, you know, go to great lengths to try to blame someone. This is what they always do. In 2016, we know from polls that voters did not leave Hillary Clinton and come to us. Voters entered into the race who otherwise would not have voted. So this is complete nonsense uh, that we were blamed for 2016. They have no one to blame but, but, but themselves. So I would reject that propaganda of powerlessness, this propaganda that is trying to drag you back in to the Democratic or the Republican machine um, so that they can continue uh, on with their genocidal ways, can expand this war, can continue to rob the American people blind of the resources we need right here at home, and instead, you know, they're conducting genocide. And right now it happens to be in uh, Gaza, but this is expanding into uh, Lebanon now as well. And, you know, they have designs uh, to go far beyond that. So I think this is a time for us to double down on our conviction, on our moral vision, and our determination to actually exercise democracy and to demand a politics of by and for the people that is serving us and our shared human values. Dr. Joe Stein, thank you very much and best of luck tonight. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Likewise.